We just saw the Metropolis algorithm for MCMC. And next, we need to check that it actually makes sense, that it actually does the right thing for an MCMC algorithm. And so remember that our goal was to approximately sample from this distribution pi or to approximate this expected value. And our plan for doing that was to construct a Markov chain that had the stationary distribution pi and then to either, you know, draw samples, you know, run it for a long time and then get a sample at the end or, you know, uh, you know, take the sample mean as our approximation of this. And that would be justified if we could show that the, the, the necessary conditions for the ergodic theorem were to hold. So what we need to do in order for this to be a valid algorithm is we need to check that the Markov chain constructed by this algorithm satisfies the properties of, that are necessary for the ergodic, the ergodic theorem. So we need to check um, irreducibility and that it has the stationary distribution pi for this one. And we also need to check a periodicity for, for sampling. So let's do that. So the first thing we need to do is get our hands on the transition matrix in order to understand this Markov chain. So let's try to figure out what the transition matrix is. So let's think about the, the, the value, the entry of the transition matrix that's T T X I X. So this is just the probability that X I plus one equals X given that X I equals little X I. I didn't have to put I and I plus one here. It could be any, you know, this could be any arbitrary K instead of I, but just, you know, to sort of keep things intuitive, let's use I. And what is this probability? So there's two ways um, for x i plus 1 to take a particular value. First, we, we sample a value, and then we either, we either accept it, so either x i plus 1 takes that value that we sampled, or we reject, and x i plus 1 is x i. So in order to, to simplify this a little bit, to simplify our analysis, let's suppose that for the moment that x i plus 1 is not equal to x. So we're going to figure this out in that case. And so this possibility is eliminated. We know that if x i plus 1 is not equal to x, then, then we're certainly, we, we couldn't have rejected because then they would be equal. And so it, the only way for that to happen is that we got our proposal x and we accepted. So the probability of this is then, it's the probability of sampling x from the proposal distribution, which I'll write using this notation, p x given x i, times the probability of accepting x, given that we chose that we chose x as a proposal and that we had x i in the previous step. We computed this probability of accepting here and this is just qxi x, uh, qxi x. So let's write in what this equals. This equals, uh, I'll just put it here. This equals qxi x times this thing, min one pi tilde of x divided by pi tilde xi. Okay. And if, if it's equal, so we also need to get an expression if it's equal, so let me put that here, tx, let's call it, let's just say txixi, what is that? Well, that's just 1 minus the sum of all these others. So we'll, we'll just put this, so 1 minus the sum over all x such that x is not equal to xi of txix because it has to be a stochastic matrix. We know T is a stochastic matrix, so it has to satisfy this property. If all, all but one are determined, that determines the last one. Okay, so that tells us the transition matrix. That's fantastic. 
And so now we need to figure out if it's, let's, let's first think about if it has the correct stationary distribution. So let's think about that. And the way that we're going to do it is using detail balance. So I claim, we'll prove this little claim, I claim that this Markov chain that's, con that's constructed by the algorithm has the stationary distribution pi, the one that we want it to have. So since we know from the video on detailed balance, we know that if, um, if pi satisfies detailed balance with respect to this transition matrix T, then in fact, the Markov chain, any Markov chain with this transition matrix has stationary distribution pi. And so it's enough for us to check that pi satisfies detailed balance with respect to T. So what does that mean? Detailed balance is of course, just, I'm also using, I'm sort of using, so I'm using this shorthand pi a for pi of, of a. I sort of switch back and forth between these two, so hopefully that doesn't confuse you too much. So we need to check that this holds for all pairs of states a and b. Question mark. Does it hold? Well, first, let's think about if A equals B. If A equals B, then it's just pi A TAA equals pi A TAA. So that's trivially true. That's trivial. And then if A is not equal to B, then what? Then Let's write out what what this left side is. So I'll switch back to this notation since it's going to be hopefully a little clearer. So pi a t a b is pi a. So since I was using this sort of other notation above, I'm switching back. That's well, what's we know pi a and t a b. We just computed what that was and and. Since A is not equal to B, we're in this case. So it's, what is it? It's QAB, QAB times the min of one with pi tilde of B divided by pi tilde of A. And now, since pi tilde equals pi up to a normalization constant, so we have this, right? Then if we multiply and divide by z here, then we just get pi of b over pi of a. So in fact, we can rewrite this. We can just do it right here. We'll just replace the pi tilde with a pi. That's equal to that. And now we have pi a over here. So let's multiply that. So we can multiply that into the min because both of these quantities are non-negative. These are probabilities. These are non-negative and this is non-negative. So multiplying those doesn't change which one is, is the min. So we can move that inside the min so we get pi a time uh, the min of pi a and pi a times this. The pi a cancels and we get pi b. Pi b. And now we're in excellent shape because what did we want to show? We wanted to show that this equals this, right? In other words, if we swapped A and B here, then we get the same thing. And this expression, this expression is, is symmetric in A and B. 
because clearly the min is, it doesn't matter if you swap these. And by assumption, by our choice of Q, Q is, a, is symmetric in A and B. That was part of our choosing. We choose a, oh, symmetric, symmet <laughs> symmetric <laughs> matrix, sorry. Symmetric matrix Q and QAB equals QBA. So therefore, therefore this is true. So detailed balance is satisfied. And therefore, Xi does indeed have the stationary distribution pi. Proof. OK, so that takes care of the stationary distribution. And what else did we need? We needed for the ergodic theorem to hold. Uh, well, we, al we also needed irreducibility and possibly aperiodicity if we wanted the second part of the theorem to hold. So I'm going to state a little, a little, another claim, and I won't go through the details of the proof because I think it's plausible enough, and and you can you can take it as an exercise if you if you want. So assume pi of x is strictly positive for all states x. So under that assumption. If Q is irreducible, irreducible, by which I mean that a Markov chain with transition matrix Q is irreducible, then a Markov chain with transition matrix T is irreducible. So irreducibility does not depend on the initial distribution of of the Markov chain. It only depends on the transition matrix. That's for a time homogeneous um, you know, Markov chain. So if you want this Xi that we, this Markov chain that we constructed to be irreducible, then it's enough for you to check that the, the proposal matrix Q that you chose is irreducible. The Markov, any Markov chain with transition matrix Q is irreducible. And also, if Q is a periodic, same thing, a Markov chain with, with, matri with transition matrix Q is aperiodic, then T is also aperiodic. Okay, so I'm not going to prove that, but, um, but that's... Uh, just a simple fact that, that, that you can check if you want. And so we have the following result. We have the result of all of our labors that the Metropolis algorithm does what we want. So let's write down what that means. If the probability of X is, this is kind of a technical condition if it's strictly positive and Q is irreducible, then, I'll put then down here, then we have the result of the ergodic theorem, the first part of the ergodic theorem, that the sample mean of f of xi, of the f of xi's, converges with probability one, or almost surely, to the true mean. And here, of course, x is distributed according to pi in this expression. And further, so that's that's because um, you know if if q is irreducible, then t is irreducible, you know, and assuming this, and we already know by the construction of the the Metropolis algorithm that that it has a stationary distribution pi. And so those conditions of the ergodic theorem hold, and if Further, further, Q is a periodic, then, put then down here, then the probability that X N equals some value little x, given that X zero equals some value little x zero equals 
or it doesn't equal, but it converges to pi of x as n goes to infinity. That was the second part of the ergodic theorem, and that holds for any x. So in other words, what this is saying is that if we take our you know, metropolis algorithm and run it for a long time, that is for, for a big n, then no matter what state we started it out in, that the distribution of the the last you know the last um, you know the the last the x n the last state in the, in the chain this x n here is going to be approximately the distribution of that guy is going to be approximately pi of x. So if we want to draw samples from pi of x, then what we can do is just run our chain for a long time and take the the ending state as our sample. So under these conditions, that's a valid procedure. And same thing for this, if you want to approximate this. So one thing which is kind of nice about this formulation is that, um, you know, you can use every single, um, every single x in the Markov chain. You know, we had these, that sequence of samples, x0, x1, x2, up to xn, and we can actually use all of those, even though they're not independent draws from our distribution. They're, you know, they're, there's a great deal of dependence between successive ones of these. Still, we can just throw them all together into this, this, uh, this average, and we have this guarantee that asymptotically it will converge to the right thing with probability one. So that's a very nice property. And one last thing I put should should mention here probably is that typically this is not actually what people do. They don't exactly do this, even though this does have this asymptotic guarantee. Let me put a as a remark. Typically what people use is instead they use something something like this. They start from like m plus one and go to m plus n. So they, they throw out sort of the first m samples, the first m steps in the chain. And they use this to approximate the expected value instead of this, this full sum. And the reason why is because the first, you know, when you're, you first initialize the chain, you might not, you know, the, the distribution of of the first x i's, you know, of x1, x2, up to xm or so, you know, the distribution of those might not resemble this pi distribution very closely at all. And so you don't really want to include those in this approximation because they're not really, really good samples. So that, that first, uh, those sort that sort of initial set of samples for some you know you choose this for some sufficiently large m and that what what sufficiently large means all depends you know on your problem and can be very difficult to figure out what m should be but this m so this 1 through m or maybe 0 through m is called the burn-in period. So if you hear that phrase or the, you know, the burn-in phase, if you hear this term, that's what it means. It's the, you're sort of, uh, you sort of need some time for it to, to really uh, sort of be a good approximation to the true distribution that you're trying to, to get pi. Uh, 